Steve Lexon has said that embedded in the great house architecture of Chaco Canyon are the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. And I take the word obsessive to mean two things. One is we see it over and over again. And we certainly see it in this building. But also the other meaning of that is that it was very precise, not just sort of kind of. Example, if you look in here, you can see that this is a large T-shaped door. And then near the middle of the door is the stairway here on the south side. Now, if you come over and take a close look, you'll see the stairway's not right in the middle. It's offset a little bit. Same thing is true of the northern one. It's not as offset as this one is, but it's also not directly in the middle. So the alignment happens between the stairways, not the doors. And the alignment here is north-south, precisely. The number seventh niche, one of those lower, larger niches, you will see one of the features that plays a role in this alignment. The other feature is this window. Now, again, it's the only window here on the eastern side, the northern wall, eastern, uh, east of the uh, northern door. And on the summer solstice, the sun has gotten as far north as it's going to get. And we call it solstice because for the next four or five days, the sun will rise in that same far north position. And solstice means sun stands still. And it comes through that window. And on the opposite wall, above the niches, you get a rectangle of light shaped by that rectangle of the window. Now, over the next 25 minutes, the sun climbs into the sky with a bit of a slant to the south, and it brings that rectangle of light on the wall down into the north, and it settles into that number seventh niche. Only time of year you'll see that. And again, it will last for about a week. There's another alignment that occurs here that's not so easy to see, because you have to be here two days of the year that you'll see it. One day in March, one day in September. This is the equinox. Now, the solstice sun seems to stand still for those four or five days at those extremes. So any solstice marker will last for about a week, but not so an equinox marker. That's the midway point between the two extremes. So one day in March, one day in September. Now, if you have a flat horizon when the sun comes up on the equinox, it comes up due east and sets due west. Now, if you go outside those two doors, those two doors are perfectly east and west of each other. Stand out there and line up the two doors so that you're looking east through them. When they're all lined up, you will see something in the middle of the door. See this bluff over here, a few hundred yards away, as it comes straight down and then meets the farther horizon to the left of it. You all see that? Well, on the equinox, the sun comes up at the bottom of that bluff, just above that farther horizon and it comes right through the two doors, and there's a corridor of light, no shadow on either side, just right through the door. But only on that one day in March and one day in September. Because what you will see here, intentional or not, and I always try to make it clear to people, we can't prove that this was intentional, but intentional or not, you're not seeing a representation of solstice. You are seeing solstice, which is a relationship between the Earth and the sun, mediated by these two features. And when you see that, you're experiencing that moment, solstice, a very important event for the Pueblo, for many people around the world, for the Navajo, for these people, I have no doubt.